and this is a video on temperature and pressure and their effect on solubility. Solid solubility and temperature. First of all, what is solubility? Solubility is basically the amount of a solute that dissolves in a given amount of solvent at a specific temperature. And let's take a look at solid solubility and how temperature affects it. And as you can see, for most of these things, what we have is solubility on the y-axis. The solubility is measured in grams per 100 grams of water, because remember, solubility is uh, an amount, the amount of solute that dissolves in a given amount of solvent at a specific temperature. And on the x-axis, we have the temperatures. And you can see for most solids, the solubility generally tends to increase as the temperature increases. Of course, there are a couple of different ones like Na2SO4 and CeSO4 in parentheses 3 that actually generally tend to decrease as time goes by. Or, I'm sorry, as the temperature increases, solubility decreases. So you can see in most cases, solubility increases with the increase in temperature. Solubility decreases with an increase in temperature for just a few substances, not very many. But normally, for most things, solubility increases with increasing temperature. Let's go back for a moment and look at each of these lines. Let's actually specifically look at the KNO3 line because it's really kind of the easiest one to see. It kind of sticks out more than all the rest of them because it's such a steep curve. If a solution is on this line, that means that the solution is what we call saturated. Anywhere is on this line, the solubility is the maximum amount of solute that the solvent, that much solvent, can hold at that given temperature. So for example, and of course this is an estimation because the scale is, is weak, at 80 degrees for KNO3, might be about 175 grams approximately, about 170 grams maybe. If we look at, let's try to find that again. There we go. And if we go to here, which is about 80 degrees, and we go across, maybe it's about 170 grams. So 170 grams of KNO3 will dissolve in 100 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius. And we say that the solution is saturated. It's holding the maximum amount of solute that it can hold at a given temperature. If it's below the curve, anywhere it's below the curve, any amount that's dissolved in the 100 grams of water at a given temperature below the curve, the solution is unsaturated and therefore it means that it can basically um, hold more solute than it actually dissolved in the solvent at that given particular temperature. Anything on this side of the line, obviously, would be actually be holding more solute than possible at a given temperature. And we would say that this particular solution is super saturated. How does one make a solution that is super saturated? Well, basically what you do is you would take your water and you heat it up to a higher temperature, 80 degrees, let's say. Take our 100 grams of water, heat it up to 80 degrees, let's say. And then we would take our 100 grams of water, 80 degrees, and we would dissolve our approximately 170 grams of KNO3, and we'd get it all to dissolve, and then we'd slowly and gently cool it without disturbing it, not allowing any dust or dirt or anything like that to get inside of there. We want our solution to be very clean, nothing that crystals could form on, because we don't have anything that's going to seed our crystals to begin to form. And as we cool down, of course, the solubility decreases, decreases, decreases. But if we do it very gently without causing any disturbance to the solution, nothing in there where crystals can form on, the solution could stay the way it is. The solute could stay in the solution, and the solution would be supersaturated. Now, if that's the case, then we have this supersaturated solution doesn't look any different. Even though the solubility has decreased, the solution will look the same. It will come out of the solution as soon as we begin to disturb it or put some kind of crystals in there. And so obviously if the solubility is about 100 and 
70 at 80 degrees, let's say we cool it down to 20 degrees, the solubility is only maybe about 45, something like that, 40, 45 grams, then 170 minus 45. We're talking about, what, 120, 125 grams of KNO3 should begin to precipitate out of the solution. Oxygen gas and solubility and temperature. Really any gas. This is solubility of gases with temperature. And we can see that the curve looks very different. Uh, the solubility here is measured in moles per liter because concentration in a sense is a solubility. You can measure it in moles per liter. It can be measured in grams per liter. It can be measured in grams per hundred grams. There's different ways of measuring solubility. And we can see as the temperature goes up, the solubility actually decreases. This is why you'll find fish in deeper, colder waters because there's actually more oxygen there. And you can see that the solubility is much less, much, much less for gases than it is for solids. Solubility usually decreases with increasing temperature for gases. Pressure and solubility. The solubility of a gas in a liquid is proportional to the pressure of the gas over the solution. This is known as Henry's Law. Henry's law says that the concentration C in moles per liter of the dissolved gas is equal to a constant K times the pressure of the gas over the solution. And again, K is a constant for each gas, and its units are the mole per liter atmosphere. And then it depends only upon temperature. The value of K depends only upon temperature. So here we see we have a gas above its liquid, or actually above a liquid. The pressure is low, so the concentration is low. We have an, the same gas with the, where the pressure above is very high, and therefore the concentration of the gas in the solution is also going to be high. And that, my friends, is our video on temperature, solubility, and pressure and solubility.